So, uh, this photo exists, and it might have motivated me to do this myself. I mean, what's the point of having, like, 75 3D printers if you don't do something cool with them for yourself every now and then? So that is exactly what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna try and document the whole process while I'm doing it. So that if you guys want to do this too, you have a good place to start. Now I'm not going to be using the files in the photo, I'm going to be using my own files for this actually. I have my own Master Chief, Halo Infinite, figurine files. Now these files are originally one-sixth scale. So here I have two figurines of the same file. We're going to scale one up 600% and we'll see how it compares. So I've got these two files loaded in 3D Builder, which unfortunately doesn't have a very good, uh, at least not that I could find, way to scale something up 600%. So what I've got to do is take the X height and multiply it by 6 and then lock all the dimensions to scale uniformly. But this is what we're looking at printing. Uh, it is just huge. Why is Master Chief out to be so tall? This is just gonna be insane. So, we're gonna have to break this up a bit into a lot more manageable pieces, but that's what we're gonna cover today. So 3D Builder is a nice software for visualizing files, but I'm actually gonna be scaling everything in my slicer program, Simplify 3D. Now here I've got the left leg piece, and luckily all of the body parts of this figurine are kind of split up. There's like two legs, two arms, a hand, a torso, all that stuff. So it's already pre-separated pretty nicely. But we're going to scale each piece up 600% and save those off. And you can pretty clearly see I uh, we're going to have to split this file up quite a bit. Because the little gray outline is my printer volume, which is the limits of what this printer is capable of printing. And this leg just sticks way out of it. There's a couple modifications we need to make to the legs because we're not going to be printing the platform that this thing stands on. It's going to just be standing on the ground. So we need to cut off those lower pegs. So the program we're going to do that in is called Mesh Mixer. It's a free download. It's what I use to cut up all my files. But we're just going to be using it to cut off the lower pegs of these two legs. So I brought both legs in. I wanted them to be at the same height so that we knew that we were cutting them at the same place. So you just got to go to edit, plane cut, and it brings in this little plane that will cut up your file. And we need the snap option in the bottom left, green. That means it's just going to snap the plane to predetermined rounded off measurements. So you can see it's snapping to different numbers as I drag it down. And we're just going to take off a little bit, as little of the foot as possible, but we're going to remember that number that we cut it at because we're going to be cutting it at the same place on the other foot. That way Master Chief won't lean to one side and be uneven. So once we have that done, we are ready to split up the files even further. Now this beautiful looking program is called Lubin. It has a lot of different features, but it is great at cutting up large files automatically that are already pre-fit to your printer. Now I'm going to select the cutting option and it's going to bring us a menu where it has a lot of different intersecting planes on our object. Now this is going to be a modular cut so we can enter in our 3D printer size limitations. Now, my printers have a size of 300 by 300 by 400 height, but I'm actually going to just enter 300, 300, 300 so that I can rotate the piece if I want to. But once we hit enter, you can see that it updated the slicing preview. Luckily, it's in a lot fewer pieces, which makes things easier. But Lubin can also generate little holes on all of the edges or little connectors so that the pieces can fit together easier. Now you can 3D print these connectors, but I actually wanted to use toothpicks because there's a lot of them, they take no print time, and they're pretty sturdy. So I entered in some measurements for a toothpick. It is a circle shape, and I could never really figure out what this depth ratio and size corresponded to. It'll generate the dowels that you are specifying here, but I'd never found that they actually were the size that I specified here. It was really weird, but these are the measurements that worked out for me for my size toothpicks. But now you just hit cut and Lubin will automatically cut and export all of these pieces. You can see here in the preview of all the different colors, that is, those are all individual pieces that are now exported to your folder. The process took around like 45 seconds to load, but your computer might be better than mine, I don't know. It's also really nice not having to load the entire seven foot tall figurine because it's a hefty file and it will slow your computer down quite a bit. So it's really nice having this pre-separated file at the ready. So now we're going to bring in those pieces to our slicer program so that we can prepare them for printing. So here I've got one of the leg pieces and I wanted to show you guys why it's important for you to be able to rotate these pieces if you want. So here's the normal orientation and if I slice this up and generate some supports, we can see that it will take 
approximately 56 and a half hours to print but it's got some pretty obvious overhangs and I feel like this would print a lot better if it were upside down. So I'm gonna flip it, generate supports again, and re-slice it using the same exact settings. You can see that it is now 52 and a half hours, cutting off almost four hours, which doesn't sound a lot compared to the overall length of the print, but it definitely adds up, especially when you're printing, you know, eight different pieces, all for the left leg. There's gonna be a lot of pieces that you are gonna be printing and a couple hours saved here and there are really gonna add up. Here's another little tip to keep in mind if you're using the same sized holes as I am. When I go to generate support, sometimes it actually generates a little piece of support inside the hole, and you wanna remove that because once it's printed, it is going to be next to impossible to pull that little thin piece of support out of that hole, but it's still gonna block everything and you won't be able to get your toothpick in there. So keep an eye out for that. I'm gonna list a lot of my print settings in the description, but these might change over the course of printing this whole thing because it's gonna be an ordeal and I will probably do a little bit of trial and error. But once all the pieces are sliced, all that's left to do is start them on the printers. I've already got one piece printed up and it is so big. It's just one of four pieces of a single arm, but it is just so big in my hand. This is. This is gonna be a mistake, but I'm having a really good time doing it. Next update video, I hope to have a lot of the pieces printed. I should be able to start them on some of these printers, but I'm also trying to keep fulfilling orders for you guys. So I'll see y'all in the next update video.